Chem Toyota Dodge Nissan. Looks good. Got Looks good. good. That's good to go. That's good to go. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Murphy. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham, New Hampshire, for another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. I'm Doug Brown, along with Dan Murphy, and uh, last week we had one of those matches that we like to see. Uh, it's tough for the guy who loses, but uh, a match that goes right down to the final box, and uh, Joe Taverny is coming from behind to get the win. Yeah, it wasn't unusually high scores, but it certainly was a, a fun match to watch. Um, I'm sure Joe appreciated a little <laughs> more than uh, <laughs> poor Rick. Or, you know, that last game was a uh, rough Rick, but... Uh, Joe's a tough competitor, and this week uh, he's trying to make it two in a row. All right, let's meet our two bowlers then as uh, we introduce our combatants here on Stars and Strikes. First of all, after a win last week, our number five seed from Lynn, Massachusetts, Joe Tavernese. Okay, Joe averaging 125, has a high single of 207, roll-off score 663. And last week, in case you missed it, uh, trailing by 29 pins in the third and final game, Joe rolled a 370 to come up with the win. So now he tries for his second win in a row, and he will face our number three seed from Milford, New Hampshire, Bill Coffey. Okay. Bill comes in averaging 127. He has a high single of 210, and his roll-off score is 670. Not very often. We were talking about this before the show began. Uh, not very often that we have two guys on that have each thrown 200 games. That's right. I'm going to have to ask them who kept score. They probably kept their own <laughs> score. With scores like that. <laughs> we have a bonus ball contest, as always, coming up at the end of the hour as well. And that continues to grow. It's up to $150 this week, so stick around for that. And a terrific matchup coming between Bill Coffold and Joe Tavernese. When we come right back, don't go away. Once again, the five bowlers that have qualified for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Joe Tavernese with that exciting come-from-behind win last week, now facing Bill Koffold, our number three seed. The winner of this match will get Brian Fuller in our semifinals next week. And then uh, the championship match two weeks from today with Rich Clark coming in in that number one spot. So Joe Tavernese, after that 370 last week, recording his first win here on Stars and Strikes last Sunday. And he'll start with the four horsemen to the right. Everything but the head pin. And a 10 box. Joe started out very slowly a week ago, 113 in the opening game, then 121 in the second. And then came back with a 136 third game to get the win. And let's see if this is, in fact, a spare leave. The wood turning more favorable on the three and the nine. Now it's moving out in front now, too, so much rather with the wood than without. Yes. And now Bill Coffold. Well, let's see, the four, the seven, the eight, and the nine pins. Triangle in the left-hand corner with the nine. I'll play the triangle, I'm sure. Too far left. Eight for Bill. Last time Bill was here in uh, singles competition was back in January threw a 400 to beat Guy Pichette and then lost in the semifinals to Bob Kelly. Pull that one to the left. No. And a 10, 18. Joe filling a spare in the second. 
Oh. <laughs> Rocked the three pin backwards and not enough to knock it down, but a big nine fill on the spare. And another spare. Rips down nine more. This time the four pin. And three in a row. Right where we left off last week. Coppled a little high. That three, time. Three, six, ten on the right with a four pin. Oh, oh great shot. Well, what if you're going to get your first mark, that's a great one to start with. Let me see the replay. Beautifully done. Six, and the eight drop. Five and eight, and going to want that piece of wood to stay out of the way. Give himself a clear shot at the five pin. Now he can get by, but not much room. Oh, he did, and he still chopped the five pin straight back, leaving the eight. And the wood would have been no help either. So he'll settle for the nine box. Pull that one left, just four on the spare. First half for Joe Tavernese. <laughs> and will he get the break? No, on the five pin. Nice little guide to the left against that five pin. You're going to miss this one, miss it left. Spare and a sixth. Three single pin spares already for Joe Tavernis. Four out of six boxes are marks, all spares. Still looking for our first strike of the match. Bill Coppold was telling us before the show that that 210 is high single he threw about seven or eight years ago. In Milford, by right. the way. Joe Tavernese with that 207 high single that we were talking about earlier. He threw that just a couple of years ago. Right. Post office lanes in Lynn. It's talking to both the bowlers about that game. And uh, you just wanted to know what it was like. Uh, yes, that's for sure. <laughs> I really would. Uh, and they both came about it two different ways. Joe uh, had four, five strikes in a row. And he can't remember if he started out with five or it happened the second through the sixth frames. So right away, he knows he's got a shot at 200. Mm. 200. But Bill, uh, he had four strikes in a row, but they started this uh, sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth. So all of a sudden, mm. you're up there. He didn't know he had a shot at 200. Billy's struggling right now. And he comes up short again. That'll be a seven bucks. A six and a seven for Bill Coppold. So that is going to leave him in a pickle. Joe Tavernese with a 23 pin lead plus this fill. Seven this time. Shoot at the one, three, and six. No wood. Makeable spare leave. 
Trying to make it two in a row here. Outside and around the six pin. Ninety-eight through seven. Ooh, three, four, six, seven. He almost <laughs> had a run at it. Didn't miss it by much. Takes a nine. So two open frames. Chance for Bill Koppel to get some work done here. Go, oh, big strike. Just what the doctor ordered there. Kind of lost a little bit of confidence and uh, put that ball right in there. And it's the best thing that could happen right now is have him throw a strike and loosen himself up a little bit. Ball breaks from right to left for Bill. Didn't quite get up there that time. Four horsemen left plus the nine. And everything but the nine. But he does take advantage of the two open boxes as he puts up 29 pins and takes 10 pins off the lead. It's now down to 20. saw Joe's roll-off score. And the roll-off for this series on Candlepin Stars and Strikes held at King Lanes in Manchester. Our good friend Dan La Rochelle and the gang. Thanks to Bob and all the rest of the folks at King Lanes for handling all the details for us. Almost, Almost converted. Almost converted that. Just a similar shot that he had on this lane 31. He's 117 with one box to go. And yeah. it's a strike. First strike of the match for Joe Tavernese. It comes in the 10th. One twenty seven plus two shots. Oh boy. Chops out the one, eight, and nine. Which, as we've said many times, may be better than the spread eagle. But you have at least a chance with that five pin in the middle. He'll take seven on the strike, a one, 34 for Joe. through the heart. Uh, Let's nice see try. on the roll. Let's see. Well, if that falls, it's gone. Huh. Oh. But it never did. With the wood there, if it fell backwards, uh, certainly would have probably rolled into the seven pin. Probably deserved a spare there, the way the wood was going over. I'd have to agree. Well, we would really like to put up a mark in the 10th to keep the lead at 20. He's facing a strike seven. That's well, not going to be an easy one. Not quite. So unlike last week, Joe Tavernese will be the one with the big lead. As he got started early with four marks in the first uh, six boxes, and he will have a 30-pin lead after game one. 134 for Joe Tavernese to Bill Coffold's 104. 
And we'll be back with the middle game here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes after these words. $150 in the bonus ball contest at the end of today's show, but you can't win unless you send those postcards in. Regular size postcards only and include your name, your full address, the number from 1 to 10, the number of pins you think will go down on the bonus ball at the end of the show. And be sure and mail those into Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. Bill Coffold trailing by 30 as we start game two. Wow, he's putting his hands up. You see him. He wants that wood to stick around. He's got the 8-9 left up, and without wood, it's nearly impossible, but let's see if he can snap this piece of wood off the right side wall. Yes. Oh, he got it. Very nice. I really didn't think he had an angle on that wood to get it to snap like that, but great read by Bill Koppel. Here it is again. That's uh, about the only way you're going to make it. That's for sure. One of the few ways you're going to make the 8-9. <laughs> and dead on the head pin again, hoping to break up the goal post, but he'll have it. 7-10. It's going to have to do a little more snapping of the wood <laughs> off the side wall. This time the 7-10, though. They're getting further apart. Well, another piece to the left. I don't would you play if the... Wood separates like that. Would you play for the deflection off the left wood, or would you go for the right? I, you wood? know, I would really shoot for the cap on the left yeah. wood. Yeah. You know, if you miss it to the right, you, you still got some pin action, but um, it, it's a tough call. For two in a row? No, uh, I, I wouldn't play it off the cap. I would uh, probably play <laughs> the wood on the right, try to snap it off the right side wall. <laughs> Captain's second guess. <laughs> Let me just push the button and take a nine box. <laughs> I'm sure it would really be a relief to Billy to know that I probably would have played the same way. Off target left for Joe. Uh oh. Looking at a mess for the third ball. So what does he do? Go for the head pin or just go for the two in the corner? He's going for the head pin and he gets the one in the five. Seven box. Not an easy pickup. No. The one in the five. <laughs> Joe tries the Brooklyn side this time and he'll have a spare leave, maybe, depending on where that wood ends up. Is one you probably want to go low toward the five pin, clip the wood. Maybe the wood will come off the right side wall and ball carry through for the five. Got it clean. Certainly did. Went a lot quicker than I thought it was going to do. Mark number six for Joe Tavernese. Bill Coffold has three. On the head pin again, yeah. but once again, Bill not carrying the extra pin. Now I need that four pin to kick out of there, give them a shot of the three, six, and ten, but he has a piece of wood in between. Now. That one got away. And that was the one. Ten and 37 after three. This is the ball he wanted to throw the first time. Bill lives in Milford, New Hampshire with his wife Sheila, works as the uh, general manager of the Friendly's restaurant in Nashua. Looking for a spare? No. And his wife's an attorney, right? She passed the bar, bar exam, I believe, right? The last time we were here, we talked about that? Not that I need one right now, but, <laughs> but you, you never, never know. know. That's right. <laughs> J 
Joe just four on his spare. Second time he's had a four filled today. And he oh, works it out yes. for a spare. Four horsemen plus the nine and the ten. Well, he looked like he hit that. Well, actually, he did hit it thin, but the pins came back for the two pin. Oh, in the pocket this time. Nothing thin about that one. Four pin for another spare, three in a row. Yes, yes, sir. And we will take a break with Joe Tavernese back on a roll here. Three straight marks, and he is in the lead here on Candle Pin Stars and Strikes. Don't go away. Here are the winning numbers from last night's Tri-State Megabucks drawing. Bill Coppold has some work to do. Yes, and uh, he's got to start pretty quick. He's a fighter, though. He's, he's going to keep attacking the pins until it's mathematically over. The five and nine here. And takes it. Mark number four for Bill. It certainly is a long ways from being mathematically over. We're just halfway through the match. As we learned with last week's match. That's right. <laughs> we'll turn that one over a little too much. Six fill. One, three, six, and the seven pin. Piece of wood now coming up behind the head pin. Just to the left now. Well, there is a possibility to get the right hand tip of that wood and the head pin at the same time. Let's see if he plays it that way. Nope. Oh, oh tried to make boy. it clean and the head pin went right around the seven. Pretty good looking shot. Certainly was, but nothing to show for it. And the seven pin is still there. This is 71 through six. Take a look at this. Watch the head pin. Boy, can't come any closer than that. Now Joe Taverney's working on his third straight mark. Seven this time. Three, four, six. Piece of wood in between, so you gotta tell yourself, I need that three pin. Left or right, he's got a chance of making the shot. Not quite. Ten for Joe. Halfway through the match, he's at 201. Six nine left. Trying to make it four marks out of six boxes. Huh. No. Too sharp on that one. Chop the six pin out. The lead is 36 for Joe Tavernese. Boy, that looked like a better ball than that. That would look, looks like it might roll all the way off. It was against the four and, uh, rather the six and the nine pins. Right about there would be nice. <laughs> that was very strange. It looked like it was right up against those two pins and all of a sudden it started rolling back. Well, I would, with Billy's ball, I'd give it a chance. I, I don't think it's, I think it's too deep for the seven pin, but you still have the possibility of it coming off the sidewall, get the three in the right-hand corner coming across. So it's an eight.
the one, two, and the back row. Didn't sound too bad that way, Doug. The one, two in the back row. <laughs> How about the one, two, seven, eight, nine, and ten? <laughs> oh, everything but the ten. They just can't seem to mount the offense right now for Billy Coffold. And that'll be a nine bucks. The ball slipped into the channel. And now Joe Tavernis with a couple of open frames to work on. There's the damage he's done so far today. That ball looked pretty good going in as well. Four, five, seven, and ten with wood that should be a factor here when it finally settles. Uh, yeah, that looks like a makeable spare now. Uh, play the wood for the ball, take this four, seven. No, mm. didn't take the, didn't listen to me, didn't take the seven. <laughs> Continues the pin well. Increases the lead to 38 now. A quick reminder about our friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan. Come to Salem and save right on Main Street in Salem, New Hampshire. Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan, participating sponsor here on Stars and Strikes. Mark number nine there for Joe Tavernese. Spare put up in the eighth. He continues to pile up his lead. And Bill Koffel just can't buy a break right now. Listen for bad luck, you have no luck at all. A 7 10. Let's see where the wood settles down. This would probably keep on rolling to the right, yeah. <laughs> Figured. We've been waiting for a lot of wood in this game. I know. You know, same situation. I think you have to play that wood. Well, it's coming back a little bit for him now. His ball breaks sharply from right to left, so. He's, he's got a chance. I think he's got a chance the way it's settled down all right in the center of the lane. No, it's too high. wasn't there. Bill is uh, desperately in need of having something good happen here. Dead in the pocket that time and still <laughs> he has something to shoot at. This is a tough pin for Bill because of the sharp break on his ball from right to left. Uh, they have to put a little more speed on to cut this, cut the break down. And he has to stay away from the no. pin in the channel, and he cannot do it. It's a nine box. He run that risk. He had to play it almost right next to the channel. Two ten after two for Bill and Joe Tavernis working on a spare and in the driver's seat. Nine more. Oh boy, <laughs> the wood swings around, flattens <laughs> out for him. <laughs> Another mark, 116 in the ninth, plus the bonus. That is four times today that Joe has had nine drops on spares. That was his 10th mark of the day. Just catches the head pin and He'll shoot at the five and the nine. For another spare. Six marks, two sets of threes, the second, third, and the fourth, and now the eighth, ninth, and tenth. I would say you'd be due for a strike, wouldn't you? <laughs> 134 plus a ball. 
134 was what he had in the opening game. This time he'll make it an even 140 for a two-game total of 274. Joe Tavernese with the commanding lead, one game to go here on Stars and Strikes, and we'll get to it when we come back. Joe Tavernese with a sizable lead, 64 pins. Not insurmountable, though. Remember last year, um, it was one of the Morgan boys. Tommy Morgan threw 190 something and came back with a 90 something and lost the match. So you never know. It's going to take a monumental effort on top, on top of uh, a little bad luck on Joe's part for Billy to get back in it. But we've seen it happen. Joe's in the Brooklyn pocket and he drops nine again. He's been doing that all day. Just a six pin to cover. No, sliding by. That's the uh, first single pin that Joe has missed all day, I believe. It's it for the 10 box, 19. So a little opening for Bill. It's got to start quick. Oh. And oh. Wow. Are you kidding me? How did that stay up? Oh, I thought it was going to stay up again. That's the way things are going today for Bill. <laughs> <laughs> I says, oh, no, watch the replay. Looked like the nine pin was going to stay up. Look at the wood fly, and luckily one stayed in play. big smile on his face. I think he's owed about five of those, but then he follows it with a half whisker. That's too bad. Half whisker right. Not quite. And the 10 box for Bill. But even with the spare, he only gains three pins. And Joe Tavernese is back to work. See, he's just about on cruise control right now. Crosses over in the one-two pocket for the strike. And that's one thing you want to do when you got a big lead. Put that first mark up. Don't go three or four boxes without one and then start to hear footsteps coming. Right in the one-two pocket again. This time, not the strike, but a spare leave. Three, five, six, and the eight pins. Yes, spare on strike for Joe. He's headed toward a almost certain 400, it would appear. with his second consecutive half Worcester. <laughs> Takes nine this time. It's a 31 through three. And it's got to be thinking strikes right now.
Well, well, this would help. Let's see. The way his luck's going today, nothing is certain. <laughs> nothing at all. Two and seven pins. Looks like he should just be able to drive the ball or the pin straight back, but there's a second piece behind it. Bill took a long look, and he's got it. Nicely played. Spare up in the fourth for both bowlers, and we will take a break here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We'll be right back. Joe Taverney's working on a spare. And he may have another one shortly. Oh, hum. Just another nine pin drop in the spare. Four pin with a uh, pretty favorable piece of wood out in front. Mark that one down for mark number 14 on the day already for Joe Tavernese. It's a 126 for 400. Whoops, 189, just three. Well, I suppose if you were going to pick a time to have that happen, it would be when you have an 80-pin lead. <laughs> and a pretty nice out, an eight. So just 21 pins, though, in those two boxes, and Bill Coppo working on a spare. What Bill needs now, though, are strikes in bunches. Six, Bill. And he'll shoot at the four horsemen to the right, trying to make it two in a row. One other time? No, he hasn't. It'll be the first time this match. Looks pretty good. Yes, he just got it. Boy, the pins are really fighting him. <laughs> They certainly are. They're rocking and rolling, and you've got to hit them about three times before they fall down. You see the ten pin just topples over. That's seven marks for Bill. He has worked very, very hard for those seven. The one, two, seven, and ten with a piece of wood roaming. And we've seen a lot of that today. <coughs> Winner of this match will be back next week. Brian Fuller, our number two seed. to face the winner of this one in the semifinals, and Bill just misses. It's just not in the cards today for Bill. Similar shot early in the match where he was able to throw the head pin around the seven pin just missing, and that time the 10 pin, from 73 through six. Joe Tavernese with the 2, 7, and 10. Maybe makeable, though, with the wood. Pretty good spot. Pretty good spot. Hit that right where he wanted to for mark number 15. You see the replay. A little high that time. Ooh. Just missing. <laughs> Not by a lot. It's going to need one more mark for 400. 104, though, through eight.
half was to the left for Bill. He's had a number of those today. He's had three in this game. I guess all you can hope for on a day like this, Dan, is if you have one, just hope it doesn't bleed over into the next day. That's right. <laughs> yeah. You know, Billy averages 127, so you can see that he's not having one of his stellar days today. A lot of times, too, he's been putting the ball in there, and he hasn't had a lot of luck either, but this time he knocks down nine, leaves a six pin. And the agony is the pins are making him wait. Right. And, uh, nothing is going right. <laughs> Uh, we'll just block this pin on you. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. No. And the 10. Billy's still smiling, folks, so. Mm. <laughs> well, I guess in many ways it could be less painful to lose by 100 than to lose by one, so. Yeah, you have to lose much sleep over this. Oh, great shot, Joe Tavernese. Still churning him out, looking for that 400 triple. That should just about assure him a 400 triple. Decent fill. It's already at 388 plus this ball and a box. And that will give him 400. Exactly. And he's going to add a little more? No, not quite. Sixteen marks on the day for Joe Tavernese. Fourteen spares and two strikes. And he finishes with 130 and a 404. And he nearly made another spectacular one in the tenth. Yes, just <laughs> not enough to carry that seven, but pretty good effort. And a 404, as Doug said, for a triple. Not a bad day's worth. Now they're going to fall for Billing. Yeah. We will see Joe Tavernese again next week as he has won his second match in a row and he will move into the semifinals against Brian Fuller. Boy, even to the last <laughs> box, a couple of boxes. Pinzo just looking at me. Aggravated enough yet, Bill? I'm <laughs> going to try a little more with you. Well, you just got to understand there'll be days like this. You just hope they don't come too often, but it'll happen. Well, the thing you have to admire here, as you said earlier, is Bill's attitude. He's not right. sulking or... No, it's, he's not that type of guy. And he'll be back in the next roll-off, and it wouldn't be a bit surprised if he's back with us. He was with us on skins uh, a little earlier in the season. Well, now, this is an unusual leave in and of itself. The two, eight, and nine, but also the two pin is, or the eight pin, I should say, is way off the spot in the back. No, oh, he carried it. Almost didn't reach that eight pin because it was off the spot. Mark number eight. Wouldn't it be fitting if he were to just throw a strike here? You oh, it. sure, there you go. Oh, no. It's an eight drop. <laughs> a split at the end, too. A 118. And a 3.28 for Bill Koppel. Joe Tavernese with the 404 makes it two consecutive wins. And we're going to try and give somebody $150 in the bonus ball jackpot. When we come back, don't go away. We are back here on Stars and Strikes. Bill Koppel is here. We have a check for you, sir, $175. Uh, boy, to say that it was not your day would kind of be an understatement. It, it seemed to start early there. 
To say it was ugly would be more, <laughs> <laughs> more like it. Uh, I just wasn't throwing a good ball. You know, I didn't get the breaks, but you got to throw a good ball to get the breaks. And uh, I just didn't have it. And Joe bowled well. He deserves to win. Yeah, and unfortunate to have a tough day against a guy like Joe Tavernese, too, who yeah, really was... Okay, I earned every penny of this today, so... <laughs> Bill, thanks very much. Congratulations. Thank Always good to see you. Thank Bill Coppold, today's runner-up. And now Joe Tavernese. Now, we've spent all week explaining the rules to, uh, to Joe Tavernese here on the bonus ball contest, because last week he rolled just a two. And uh, so this week we're hoping that it'll be just a little bit more than that. We have $150 on the line. Well, he doubled it. He doubled it. It's a four. Obviously, Joe doesn't want to. He doesn't want to show anything during this contest stuff. New bowling balls, I guess. Well, see, uh, you're getting farther away now, Joe. Louise, Louise LeBlanc from Manchester, New Hampshire, guessing nine. So, Louise, you'll be getting a consolation prize. And slide right on in here, Joe. Uh, this week uh, you used a, a different script to get off to a good start this yes, time. Yes, I did. I, I come out of the box nice this time. It was, uh, yeah, it was still a tough bowling against him, and, but it's, he just was off, and it just made it a lot easier, but it's still it's hot. <laughs> and, and unlike last week, uh, it was the spares this time that piled yes, up. Yes, it did. Yeah, that's why I mostly throw spares. I'm like... I'm a finesse bowler like uh, Dan Murphy <laughs> over here. <laughs> As he always says, yeah, yes. Always says, All right, always semifinals says. next week. Uh, you get two wins in a row. Brian Frill will be here. We'll see you then. Okay, thank you very much. All right, Joe Tavernese with two wins in a row. Thanks, and that's going to about do it here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes along with Dan Murphy. I'm Doug Brown for the whole Winds of New England crew. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next weekend, Saturday, for Candlepin Skins, and then next Sunday back here for Stars and Strikes with the semifinals, Joe Tavernese and Brian Fuller. Until then, have a great week, everybody. Mm -hmm.